Hey everyone, welcome back. So now let's look at this tie line again. We're going to learn about something called the lever rule. So the tie line connects the phases and equilibrium with each other. It's often also sometimes called an isotherm. So we have it right here and it's connecting straight across from our solid to our liquid and saying, hey, we're somewhere in the middle, so we're a mixture of this liquid and solid. But what fraction of each phase? Well, before we determined like, okay, there's a distance to the solid side, there's a distance to the liquid side, and this is not always liquid and solid. There's different phases we're gonna see later on, sometimes multiple solid phases, sometimes multiple liquid phases mixing together. And we're using something called the lever rule, which says that if I have a shorter lever arm, like I do right here, then I need a greater weight fraction to balance it out. And similarly, if I have a longer weight fraction, or lever arm, then I need a shorter Sorry, a smaller weight fraction to keep it balanced. So the shorter the lever arm to my side, the larger my weight fraction needs to be to keep it in balance. So if I'm looking at this, then the mass of the liquid times R has to be equal to the mass of the al um, alpha side times S. And so this is where that comes from. This is where this comes from. Because if I'm trying to find the weight fraction of the liquid, well, it's going to be equal to um, the mass of the liquid over the total mass, which I don't know. And so I'm then going to be solving for that using this equation. And so if I know the concentration at my particular location, and the distance to alpha, I can then solve for this. So this is a nice little tool right here to help us out and help us figure out what's going on. Um, let's see. So yes. Now let's try using our tie rule and see what happens as we cool this copper nickel alloy. So first off, we're in a completely liquid state at 35 weight percent nickel. And then I cool it right down here to this point. If we're using our tie roll, you can see that I'm, I'm like 99% liquid because this is an extremely short lever arm. I've got a very long lever arm over here, so it's going to be very, very small amounts of alpha. But you can see that these little dots of solid have begun to appear. If I continue to cool it, those solid dots get bigger and bigger. So now my liquid is 32 weight percent nickel, and my solid is 43 weight percent nickel. And I keep on dropping down, and you see that I'm getting further and further away from that point. And as I do, um, as I have less and less liquid, and more and more solid, you can see that my composition is continuing to change. So more and more of this liquid is turning into the solid nickel until finally I cross over and now I'm 100% solid. So you see these grains, they began to form, they grew larger, and then eventually they coalesce into one whole solid, which is 35 weight percent nickel again. So we start at 35 weight percent nickel, we end at 35 weight percent nickel, and sometimes in between we have different fractions, but as long as we are cooling slow enough, um, it will all have the same composition at the end. However, that's only if we're cooling slow enough. Like this is if we have a slow rate of cooling, we have this nice equilibrium structure where all of it is 35 weight percent nickel. Because remember, like a bit to begin with, that you know solid nickel, um, sorry, the solid structures had a much higher composition of nickel. However, if we cooled it quickly, those would not be able to change quick enough. And so we get this cord structure where at the very, very center, we have very, very um, nickel-heavy um, structures. As we go farther away from that, we have more and more, or sorry, more and more copper in this composition. So this is something you have to be very, very careful about because sometimes you want this. Maybe you want a cord structure because when you change the amount of nickel, you're also changing the elasticity, you're changing the strength, and perhaps this is a good thing, but it might not be. So you have to think about it. 
when you're cooling something slowly, you're giving it the time to move. You're giving those atoms the time to move and change to an equilibrium structure. If you cool it quickly, it's going to get caught and it won't be able to change quick enough. So, oh, one more thing. Um, and a, like I said before, a reason you have to be careful about this is because your elasticity and your tensile strength um, change as a function of composition. So you can see right here that like um, the tensile strength is actually at a maximum somewhere around like 60%. And your elasticity is also at a minimum around 60%. So if I have that cord structure, depending on where I am, I might have a very, very stiff core and strong core and a very elastic outside, which might be good. Or I might have a very, very elastic outside, sorry, very, very elastic inside and a very, very um, hard but brittle exterior. So one of those might be good for one situation, one might be good for another, but you need to realize that's happening if you cool it quickly because you'll get that core structure. So that's all for now. Thank you for listening. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Bye-bye.